We take pride in the fact that we were the only university in the state of Texas this year to participate in a football bowl game, the men's basketball tournament, as well as the NCAA baseball tournament. The only school in the state of Texas. A burst up the middle, Brooks on the move. Touchdown! It's Brooks time. not only on the playing field, sports, and tracks, but also in the classroom. Twelve teams with a cumulative grade point average of 3.0 or greater. Good afternoon. There you go. Took it three times. We haven't been here in three years in this room together, and it took us three times to get that mic going, but thank you all for being here. What a great crowd today. Welcome to the 2022 Red Redder Club kickoff luncheon, here to celebrate the debut season of Joey McGuire and the Red Redder football program. We're so excited about that. But before we get started, I did want to thank Spirit. Uh, Saddle Tramps and the Going Band, along with the Mass Rider, for being here today. That wasn't planned. Thanks to Joel and Eric with the Going Band, Stephanie, Bruce, and Aaron with Spirit. And again, the Mass Rider, we're going to have a new name for the horse next Friday, thanks to our partners at United Supermarkets. So we're looking forward uh, to that. And how about yesterday? Huge day already. Great job by Blaine Bill and his group for the centennial celebration. We saw that kickoff, and we announced yesterday the Going Band is going to Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade next year. How about that? First time in the history for the Going Band. Again, I mentioned it's three years since we've all been together for a kickoff luncheon. We haven't done this since 2019. And you think about that. You guys are obviously ready to get out. This is a huge crowd. Think about three years ago, how much has changed? If you came here three years ago and you had a cactus on your table, you'd be thinking, what the hell is going on here? But now you're like, hell yeah, cactus. Yes, of course, cactus. Coach Adams couldn't be here today, but he said, you know what I love about the cactus? He said, it's like a defense plant. It's got the, it's got the, de it's like defense. And he said, it's durable, adaptable, tough. It's like we are in this room, most of us in this room are all those things as Red Raiders. So we love the cactus, and one thing the cactus has shown us, whether it's 2019 or 2022, do not screw with Texas Tech fans on social media. You're going to lose. You're going to lose that battle. So enjoy the cactus. We've got a great program planned for you today. We're so grateful for each and every one of you for being here. And Thanks to the Red Raider Club. If you're not a Red Raider Club member, you're going to hear a lot of stories today why you should be. We need you to be a part of this fight here at Texas Tech. If you can't feel the momentum that's going on right now in Texas Tech athletics, you haven't been around because it is like I've never seen it before. We need you to be a member of the Red Raider Club. You have cards on your table. You can join us. You can be part of the fight. 
and there's a QR code. You can actually do it from your, from your table right now, or you can do it old school and fill it out. We don't care. We just want to thank you all for being here, and thank you for being Red Redder Club members, and hopefully a bunch of you will become Red Redder Club members as you leave today or while you're here. Again, it's brought to you by the Red Redder Club. The Red Redder Club's annual fund raises the funds to provide everything our student athletes need to compete on and off the field. Scholarships and academic resources, like tutoring and the tablets. They use tablets not only for class, but they use it for game preparation as well. Leadership development, nutrition, all these things. This is, this is why we need you people, because there's so many ways you can give to us, but the Red Raider Club becomes the foundation for what we need. And it starts with a room like this today and the stories you're going to hear today, but we need you to be a part of that. So please join the fight. You old timers in there that don't understand about QR codes, like uh, some of us, fill them out. Do it the old fashioned way. We'll take them up from you or you can leave them at the, at the end. Or by the time you finish your cookie today, you can be a member if you do the QR, QR code. So it's going to be uh, fantastic. So make sure you become a part of what we're doing here at Texas Tech and the Red Raider Club. My name is Robert Giovanetti. I'm Senior Associate Athletics Director for Texas Tech University. On behalf of the entire athletic department and the Red Raider Club, I can't thank you enough for being here. We even have people in the, in the cheap seats upstairs. So we appreciate all those people for being here. You know, in the past, this event and another event kind of kicked off the start of football, and that was the Chamber of Commerce breakfast that we had every year. Several of you have had your coffee or orange juice spilled on you by errant passes by Bernie or, or John Zweiker, right? We don't have the breakfast this year. We combine them. The Chamber is a longtime friend of Texas Tech Athletics. Their mission is to strengthen, promote, and serve the business community. Their values are to be member-focused, have high integrity, innovation, and collaboration. This is a great example. We're collaborating with them on today's lunch. The Chamber's mission and values closely align with those of us at Texas Tech and the Red Raider Club, and we're proud of this partnership and throughout the year and to team up with this great organization. The Chamber has more than 1,400 members. Many of you in this room are Chamber members. Uh, we are proud to be joined by the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, as well as their new president and CEO, Kay McDowell, and her team. Please help me to thank them and the board, and the board chair, Casey Doyle, for being here today. Thank you, Chamber. You're down here. Today's event is also sponsored by Reliant and their parent company, NRG. Special thank you to Reliant. Uh, for making their commitment to Texas Tech Athletics and partnering with, with us to make this afternoon possible. We have some great news with Reliant. If you haven't been, shame on you if you're not following our social and uh, our, our webpage. We have exciting news about Reliant. We announced it earlier this week. They're a proud partner of Texas Tech Athletics, powering football, basketball, baseball, men's and women's basketball, everything else, and the Alumni Association over the next few years. Reliant is a perfect partner for Texas Tech. We're thrilled to welcome them to our family. We're excited to see that relationship with them continue to go, to grow. Energy is a Fortune 200 company that provides electricity, natural gas, and energy solutions to millions of customers throughout North America. Reliant is an energy company. It's a provider with deep Texas roots, with nationally recognized for outstanding customer service and taking care of the customers. Again, we talked about this with the Chamber, aligning with what we want to do at Texas Tech Athletics. Reliant is proud to be an involved member of the Chamber for the past five years and also a cornerstone partner of the South Plains Food Bank. They also stole one of our employees. They have hired two-time Texas Tech graduate and former Tech employee, we're, we're, gonna not, we're gonna look past that, Anna Delano, to be their regional market development manager. So thank you again to Reliant and Energy for their support of this annual luncheon and this new partnership. Again, let's welcome and thank Reliant and Energy for being here with us today. I want to recognize a few people here in the crowd. Please help me and welcome. Uh, I know he's here. I saw him walking in. Regent Mark Griffin is here today. So Regent Griffin, there he is. <laughs> Chancellor Ted Mitchell is in the house somewhere, right there, right, right in front of me. <laughs> President Lauren Skuvenek is here today. <laughs> President Skuvenek. <laughs> U.S. Representative Jody Arrington is in the house. Jody, where is Jody? Okay. And of course, our athletic director, Kirby Hokut, is here. We'll hear from uh, Kirby. I'm not trying to take your applause away from you. We'll hear from Kirby and uh, President Skubanek here in just a little bit. So we've got a great program. We're excited to be here. We're excited you're here. While you're sitting there at that table, you can join the Red Reddit Club and be a part of our fight. We need you with us. 
and we're ready to get going. So I'm going to bring up here President Skubanek. President Skubanek has been at Texas Tech now for more than 40 years. And one time he travels with us a lot uh, on the road, and uh, he was outside, we were outside, and, and I was out of breath going up the stairs, and he was, he was fine, and he kind of looked at me kind of like he was disappointed in me. And he talked about his heart rate never gets, gets up. He's, uh, that's why he's a great runner, right, President Skubanek? He's, he's a great runner. So he may live forever. He may be here for the bicentennial if, if this goes on because he, he's done so much. Since he's become the 17th president in 2016, he's overseen unprecedented enrollment growth, record investments in research and fundraising. The designation is both a Carnegie Tier 1 research institution and a Hispanic-serving institution. Under his guidance, Texas Tech has initiated more than $900 million in new facilities and opened a branch campus in San Jose, Costa Rica, that's a tough one, and the Texas Tech University School of Veterinary Medicine in Amarillo. President Skubanek is proud to serve Texas Tech in the special years. We mentioned we're, so, we're about to start a big centennial celebration. Not a better guy uh, to be leading that for us. He's a great representative for us in athletics. He's also the current chair of the Big 12 Board of Directors. Please welcome President Lawrence Skubanek. Thank you, Robert. Um, I don't run much anymore. Um, I went to play pickleball with the Crowfoots a while back, and I've never been the same. <laughs> um, thank you all for being here. Uh, you don't know how important you are to our athletic programs and to this university. There's always a special atmosphere at the beginning of a new academic year, and I've been here a long time, yes, 40 years, but it's different. I feel something different. There's a different level of energy. Now, you're going to hear from Coach Stone today. We all love Coach Stone, and we know that he's about energy. But in the 10 months since we hired Coach McGuire, he's upped the game. Uh, what he's done in that period to tell the story of Tech, to bring our fan base together, is amazing. So we're, we're as Robert said, there's something very special going on right now. He's been a big part of it. But that applies to all of our athletic programs and also for the things going on at the university. I appreciate Robert's mention of the, the production yesterday announcing the launch of the Centennial Celebration. The students of the College of Visual and Performing Arts and many others did a wonderful job of trying to convey what this university is about. And there was an announcement in there that Texas Tech has been selected to be the band in the Macy's Day Parade. And a gentleman named Wesley Wadley came from Macy's, and we met with the band before the production to let them know. And Wesley told those students, you're going to be in Manhattan, be X million people watching, 20 million watching online, and you're going to see excitement like you've never felt or seen before. And so when I thanked him for the invitation and the donation they made, I said, Wesley, you are wrong. You should be here on September 24th when Texas pulls into town and we're 3-0. and <laughs> You'll see excitement. No pressure, coach. <clears throat> but... That event yesterday was more than just that announcement. It was, the, it was the story of how Tech, Lubbock, and West Texas have been so connected and how those connections are so important and such a part of our culture. And athletics has been critical to that connection to this community. So to every student athlete, all of the coaches, everybody in the coaching staffs, thank you for what you do to represent this university. There's not a greater fan base in this country than the Red Raider Nation. Thank you so much for what you do. You make a difference. We're here to talk football, of course, but we do have some other fall sports going on. We've got volleyball, cross country, and you heard the president mention soccer. Uh, Tony Greystone, who took our volleyball team to the NCAA tournament last year. Uh, great season last season. He can't be here today. They are on the road in uh, South Bend, Indiana to take on Notre Dame. Uh, we saw how that happened against Notre Dame earlier this uh, year, so maybe we'll see the same results uh, tonight for Coach Greystone and his group. 
and um, uh, cross country will start on September 2nd in Abilene Christian and soccer just had a uh, tie last night they've started one one and one on the year but we thought this would be a great time to bring up here talk about being around a while a couple of old guys coach Stone and coach Kitley they combined while President Skubinek has been here 40 some odd years uh, combined those two guys have been here 40 years so please join me in welcoming the head coach of our track and field program Wes Kitley yeah And our soccer coach, you have to come this way, coach. I don't think there's, I don't think there's a way up, unless you want to jump up from over there. And then Tom Stone here with us today. Thank you, thank you guys for being up here. Tom's wearing his his swag. That's good. You look good, Tom. Tom's about to go to go one more, one more. Go to uh, California. Today you already got the you already got the look going today. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, we heard I mentioned it. Heard President Skuvenek mention it. Both you guys have been around a while. Do Long, you, longer, a little longer for Coach Kitley. Do you feel that kind of change in what's going on around Tech Athletics, Coach? You want to start, Kitley? I tell people this every year, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's the most exciting time that I have ever been a part of. This is my 24th season. Uh, I, I've never seen the excitement more, and just. Uh, everybody on the same page and so uh of course it's pretty fun for me to have my son back home so yeah we're going to mention that in a minute coach well you're big about you're big into culture and you're big into as you mentioned energy what are you feeling right now well i, I think that you know when the president was talking earlier about it's such a great feel on campus we, we can't deny what we just went through right and this is such a community a connected community that what we went through the last two years was just so unlovic, so un us, so unable to enjoy all the things that we all live here. And now we got it back, and you can't always put your finger on it, but when you just walk around, when you just feel the way our community has responded to really just being back to our normal lives, having that freedom again, having the ability to be everything that is Lubbock, Texas, and West Texas, it's, it's a vibe in and of itself. You can't even really put your finger on it. But that's part of what it is. And I think the rest is just leadership on down. I mean, look at, the, look at how long our president's been a Red Raider. You look around the country, you don't find that. Look at the claims that Kirby Hocutt had the guts to make when he took the job here. And look at how many of those things have been fulfilled. We have aggressive leadership. We have new people that have joined our staff. We've never had a better coaching staff. I mean, I'm sitting here next to a national champion. We've got one of the most exciting, invigorating football coaches we've ever had here. I mean, it's Tim time. It's Wes time. It's Joey time. You know, it, it's, it just keeps going on. You really don't have to sleep on anybody because everybody's good now. And when I got here 16 years ago, we were one of the ones that weren't that, that great yet. And, and really, there weren't that many good teams. You were kind of carrying the flag in a lot of ways. But everybody's good now. And that also makes it exciting to be an athletic, you know, department member. Coach Kitley, you just mentioned it. How cool is it for you? All this is going on, all this excitement, and then here comes Zach back to be to be on um, part of that staff. That's got to be amazing for you and your whole family. Yeah, Gio. You know, it was always our dream. It was definitely my dream, and I know it was his dream to get back. Uh, we probably didn't think he would get back quite as quickly, uh, being 30 years old when he got back, but. Uh, you know, it's just incredible. Uh, I'm pinching myself every day. I can remember in 2008 when I'm in the bottom end of the Jones Stadium and, and uh, we, we have Graham Harold to Crabtree and, and Zach and Jonathan and Chris are bailing out my window to storm the field. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, he was raised a Red Raider. This is his school. He loves it. And uh, buckle up because I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it's been great, and the grandkids are back, and all, everything else, right? So there's yeah, been lots of grandkids are pretty special. You can ask Linda about that. <laughs> yeah, that's been great for you guys. I know I've seen you out there uh, at practice as well. Tom, you guys are off to a start. You had a, a tie last night with New Mexico. You've got a young, really, uh, very athletic team. And again, I'm no, I'm a soccer novice, as you know, but it sure seems like these last two games, you guys were the better team. Just got away from you. Yeah, soccer and hockey, you know, you can dominate and uh, the goalkeeper can have a great performance or you can just not finish your chances. I think that's what happened last night. You know, it's, it's tough to swallow 17 shots to four and not be the victor, but that's our game. And, you know, if you follow soccer, you'll know, uh, disappointing to all of us, they took overtime away because we had them on the ropes last night and 20 minutes of overtime, it would have been curtains for the Lobos, but we don't have that opportunity this year. So uh, it's a little bit different dynamic, but we are young and athletic is all get out and really exciting team to watch. And, 
It, it's a really fun deal. You know, for all you dads out there that I haven't converted to women's soccer, if you ever want to see women knock the living crap out of each other, it's not your two daughters. Uh, it's women's soccer. Uh, you can't foul out. You can get thrown out, which, you know, is always something that could happen. Uh, from from the coach, to too. Yeah, yeah, from yes. game to game. But it is a, it's an awesome deal. Get down there field level and watch these girls get after it. Hey, you're a, you're a sports fan, huge sports fan. What makes Coach Kitley such a great coach? You know, since I know absolutely nothing about track in, in terms of the science behind it, the thing that I've appreciated watching him and have had many mentoring sessions with the guy, to be honest, is his consistency. 20 years ago, he was coaching a certain way, and he certainly pivoted and evolved pivoted and evolved as, as the kids have evolved, but he's just so consistent. He's got core values, he's got core standards, it's in the weight room, it's in his faith, it's in his life, it's in the way he communicates with kids, male, female, kids from all over the world. Just so solid and so consistent. And I think when you turn your, your daughter or your son over to this man, you know he's gonna look after him. And so not knowing enough about track to comment on how good he must be about coaching him up, uh, I do know that he has uh, developed talent and developed young men and young women, and you can't, you know, you don't always find that everywhere anymore in coaching. And, and he's very amiable and friendly and all those things, but he's pretty competitive too. This guy? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you could say that. So first, first week on the job, he comes in and he says, Coach, uh, he watched our team play. I've been on the job for a week. And he comes in, he goes, do you have a minute? I said, yeah. He goes, we got to do some things. And I said, what's that? He goes, you got to get faster, Coach. He said, you are never going to beat Missouri, who had just beaten us that weekend, until you're faster. And he showed up three years later, and we ran Missouri off the field. And I remember him leaving the stadium saying, told you, now that you're fast, you can win some games. So we appreciate you, Coach. Yeah, speed kills, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> coach Kitley, with all this going on, just what's, can you tell us before, you know, last question for you is the relationship these coaches have here. We get to see it a lot working here, but I'm not sure those people out there see just how close-knit just our entire coaching staff is across the board. Men's, women's sports, everything. You guys are a good group. What does that mean, and how does that impact this culture here? Yeah, I'm telling you, I've been around 24 years here, and I'm in my 39th total. You do not find this anywhere. We have something so special here. I mean, I talk to him all the time. I'm, I'm talking to Tadlock. I'm talking to everybody on the staff. It is a relationship. We care for each other. We love each other. We're for each other. And we all get along. And I mean, the football staff, basketball staff, it's just all welcoming. And you don't see the, the track coach being able to, to be uh, with those guys like that. And uh, I just think it's something special that people take for granted. Uh, we don't. And I'm telling you, it is, it's incredible what we've built here. Uh, definitely uh, Kirby's brought all that to us. And... I don't know what else you can say other than, you know, we've just got the greatest program in America. Coach Stone, always put this pressure on you because I know you can handle it. You and I used to be office mates. We're not anymore. I had Smart to move. Corner. <laughs> Smart corner. Take us home. What's, the, wh what's your final thought here for this group before you leave and get on a plane? So my final thought is uh, about Coach McGuire because this is all his welcome committee for this fall season. This is your party, Coach. This is your team. This is your year. This is your, not your first foray into this many people because you've been around this town, which I'm going to get to. But I want to just tell you my quick little story about Coach McGuire. So I like doing this. We, I get to get up and talk to a bunch of groups. I spoke to a lot of your companies in different places, and it's all exciting. And all of a sudden, I hear we got this new football coach, and the first thing somebody said to me was, you know, Tom, you're going to get retired. No one's talking to you anymore. No one's going to need you. No one's going to talk to you. And I'm like, I get that. I mean, football, 80,000, soccer, 1,500. You know, I get the reason, ESPN versus ESPN Plus. I know the, the hierarchy, right? I respect the hierarchy. But I'm like, who is this guy? And so I go to his press conference, and he runs out. He's like, Raider. And, everybody, and even the media, people that don't even like us are like, power. And I'm like, who is this guy? And then he's like, I want to say that all my life. And I'm like, really? All your life? You just got the job like yesterday. You sure you haven't been wanting to say it since yesterday? But everybody's falling for it. I'm like, man, I've been through Spike and Cliff, and uh, you just keep naming. I'm like, who is this guy? So then I'm going to the basketball game, and I always go up to Kirby's Suite first, take my kids. We eat all the cookies. We go up there, Lindsay and I. And... Uh, I'm sitting in the suite, and usually when I walk in, you guys seen the old Cheers, those old episodes of Cheers that Norm walks in, everybody goes, Norm, right? That's how it is when we walk in. It's like, Stones, hey, Tom. You know, we walk in, Tony's always sitting there. 
And everybody's got their back to me, and I'm like, hey, everybody. And they're like, they didn't even turn around. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, Joey's about to do the Raider power at the basketball game. I'm like, who is this guy? Like, was he born in a Texas Tech onesie? Because that's what he wants us to think. <laughs> so then I meet him. I'll get to that in a second. So then I go to this birthday party for the Lewises. They run out the entire West table. There's like 150 people there. Lindsay and I are there. We're all dressed up. It's all our people, all our friends. Can't wait to walk in there. I've kind of got this cloud over my head now. Nobody wants me to speak anymore because this new guy's here. And I walk in, and there's like 50 people on the dance floor. And around this guy is this whole crowd of people going, go Joey, go Joey. And he's dancing in the middle of this crowd. I'm like, this guy. And then guess what starts happening? Players start committing here like we've never seen. Talent is paying attention to us like we've never witnessed. The genuineness of him and Debbie, the reality that he probably was born to be a Red Raider starts to sink in. And I can't help but be just like all of you guys, I, I would suppose, to just be so on board with this mission, with this man, with this family that we've brought in to shepherd our football program, which is the most prestigious program along with you know, what Mark's been able to do with basketball. It's the driving force of any athletic department. As much as I love going to baseball games, this is the thing that runs it through. And so getting to know this man